Hi, my name is Steve Thornton and welcome to Real Magic Review and today I'm going to be talking about Daniel Chard's Penguin Live Lecture. Uh, but please watch this first. So please like, subscribe, share, tell the world about it and click the little bell icon down there so you get notifications when you subscribe, which you surely will. And please go and check out carbmagiccourse.com uh, if you like my videos on here, you'll like my videos on there because there are hundreds of them, literally, I think there's over 200 now of me teaching you every single thing I know with a deck of cards. And every time I learn something and it's effective, I will share that as well with permission. Uh, so it's growing all the time, incredibly proud of it. Have a look at it and it's a great way to support the channel. Basically, uh, the more subscribers I get on there, which is like 9.99 a month, the more reviews I'll make and one day, imagine that, I can live off that, not yet, uh, and just do this, and I'll be doing videos every day which will cause you to lose the will to live, no doubt. So, I want to talk about Daniel Chard's uh, Penguin Lecture for a couple of reasons. Daniel was one of the people in the early days, like a few people of this review show, that I had, had to kind of, you know, because people didn't know who I was, people still don't know who I am, but you do, so that's good. Um, but I, I called around people and said, look, you know, send me some stuff, I want to review it. So Daniel was very kind and did that and send me his uh, the, the, the expert at the chart table. Um, uh, so, so he asked me to have a look at this and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I did because I like Daniel. I like the fact that he's not really up himself. You know, I like the fact that he's really good with cards but seems like a genuinely normal in the best, I mean that in the nicest possible way, human being. He's not like, hey, look at me. So he's got that, that nice human quality about him, which is I think why he's, He's so successful in, is it Slights in Bath where he works? Sorry if that's the wrong place, I'll correct that because I get mixed up with a, a place in Bristol, uh, which was Illusions, was it? Probably not. I, <laughs> God, this isn't going well, is it? I think I've got them right. Illusions in Magic Bar, yeah, because there's one in Manchester. So, um, so I watched this and I watched this and looked at it and went, four hours, blimey. And then I went, no, four hours, that's good, isn't it? You know, because obviously you, uh, the, it's not a four hour show. It's a, you get the show, which is whatever it is, 40 minutes or whatever. And then you get the, the, the deep instruction. Now, I haven't watched many of the, the, the lectures because of, because of time and things like that. But I really enjoyed the, the, the way it was put together. It felt like a genuine show. At times it felt a little bit L&L in the way that I think that they're reacting very well, aren't they? I'd like that audience. Uh, but but I know they're, they're genuine people and they're watching it and they, and they were genuine responses. They're just a very, very generous, lovely audience, which, are, which is always nice to watch and makes the video easier to watch. But importantly, Daniel's stuff is all commercial. And I know a lot of people say that, but a lot of people say that about magic and you watch it and go, is it though? Because that's a, long drawn out thing that I can't imagine work in many places unless I'm doing my own parlor show with a paid audience. Um, but all this stuff I think you can pluck from any of these things and learn them and put them into your repertoire. You can't go wrong with a strong multiple selection. There's this multiple selection routine which is, you know, if you learn a multiple selection, I've, weirdly enough I didn't do one for years and I've, I've now, it's taken me a long time but I've got one I'm really happy with that I've got the right rhythms to it and all that. So I think that but that's, that's great. He's got a really nice way, uh, based on an idea by Tom Wright, of doing a double writing thing, which I, I won't, I'm not going to give it all away, but it's got an opener, which you think is an opener that a lot of us use. But it's just got the, this little tweak from it that made me think, God, that, it fooled me because I didn't see what actually happened. I, I was just kind of watching it as a, as a punter, really, as a, as a lay person, which I'll try and do. And I just kind of went, oh, wow, that completely flew. And that's going straight in, definitely. I mean, I really enjoyed, because it, it, for me, it was kind of, kind of going back to basics, but with this extra tweak, and I went, that re that's really, really strong. Um, so it's full of things like that. And then it's got slightly different effects, like it's got this nice thing where he's got some cards with some jokes, and some cards with some bad punchlines and the spectator, it's like a do as I do thing, the spectator picks a card and then the punchline matches it. I think it could have been milked a little bit more with even worse jokes. I think that the jokes were the kind of bad jokes we've heard a lot and I think that they could have, it could have been almost like a, a kind of Tim Vine thing where you've got bad jokes but that are really good. You know, some bad jokes, no matter how you tell them, are really good because they're so clever. And I think that I saw that and I thought, no, actually you need to, put some proper funny jokes in there that are puns as well that still make people go, oh, but, um, 
but but we'll just add that little bit more to it but that's not good i mean it's a it's a lovely idea and something that again if compared to you've got the multiple selection that works at tables and on stage kind of but it's a close-up thing you've got the things that work really small and of course you've got something like that that plays really big and it's and it's quite it looks like quite a unique routine so that daniel shared that is is a really good thing so for you card people out there i really i think it may it's good how if you're not that experienced he goes into detail about the moves like he'll even go what sort of double lift he uses but i like that as well because i like going back to that and and I always pick up something. So this is sleight of hand with cards. So that's the ability level. It's it's. I think if you are a beginner, it's a really good thing to get and think, right, I'm going to actually attack this and learn a lot of this stuff because it's commercial. So you'll be learning stuff you can use rather than learning stuff that you'll never be able to use because that can knock your confidence a bit. Um, but it is skilled. You know, it's got this bit at the end that's, that's based on a Pepe Carroll thing that, he, that inspired him to music, which is lovely. But, you know, there's a lot in here. There's a lot of slides to learn. There's There's... There's a lot of performance skills to learn. He talks, he goes into detail about that as well. So it's a, it's a, it's a good lesson. So whatever level you're at, I think there's something for you in this. And he is a performer. He is someone that takes the tricks and performs them. I've said this before. That is quite rare sometimes. You know, you see someone doing it and you think, yeah, I love it, but where, where? But this is, you know, a lot of it's in the hands and in really, really strong stuff. So. Um, Check it out. That's Daniel Chard's lecture. I'll put all the links below uh, that you need and, and have a great one. Please like and subscribe. Please share. Please comment. Do all that stuff because it. I cannot stress this enough. It makes all the difference. Thanks very much. Have a great one. Cheers.